Hi, welcome to my talk around uh, how AI will transform uh, the streaming industry. I'm Mark Brinkat, uh, Group CTO at Intif. Uh, Intif is a domain, uh, uh, a design-led engineering company that operates in uh, different verticals. Yeah, uh, We are around 3,000 digital enthusiasts, uh, which operate through technology hubs across Latin America, Europe, and India. Yeah, so are you ready? So what, what, what are we going to cover today? Uh, we're going to look at how AI is applied in uh, various industries, and then talk a bit about uh, the streaming industry. Then we will uh, talk a bit about what are some of the risks, and finally, how we should approach them, yeah? So I'm going to start you off with imagine, yeah? Imagine, as a user, I get my highlights summarized in a completely personalized way. Barrier-free, dynamic, local, and in real time. You know in advance how your users will behave, what content they will consume, when and where. Editing is fully supported to create, address, and make content accessible. Yeah. So AI has been around for a while. Yeah? It's been in our everyday lives. If we consider the personalized engines in uh, streaming services like Netflix, Spotify, you know, those personalized recommendation engines are driven via AI. At home, we are used to interact with AI, yeah? The Google or Alexa. But really now we're going to look a bit wider and look at a few industry cases where AI has been really, really transformative. Let's start a bit with the automotive industry. Yeah, if you consider driver assistance systems, collision detection, real-time monitoring, AI is behind making us drive safer. Yeah? These images are some of the examples where we have been working with some of the leading manufacturers of, um, with embedding this technology into their vehicles. Yeah? But also, if we consider another industry, AI has been really playing a role in uh, making us live better lives, healthier lives. Yeah? This example is, a, is, is an interesting one for me. I, I really like this project because we're applying AI and machine learning, and we are really taking that and embedding it with 3D scans. And really, it's, you, it's, it's through the models, it's measuring the level of asymmetry in different body parts. And by doing that, we are really being able to uh, provide aid diagnostics to surgeons to provide, to, 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 to provide better insights, yeah? AI this year, generative AI, has reached mass awareness. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been on everybody's lips. Partly with what uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT, and Google Bart bringing in mainstream. And it now is proposing that it will enable us to code faster. Yeah, it proposes to really do two things. Reduce development time reduce time to market, and increase code quality and reliance. Yeah? This technique, in association with an inner source approach, can really transform the way collaboration across development teams and across different areas of your company can operate. So, we spoke a bit about generative AI. What is it in, in simple? Many of you probably know because you've, you've been hearing about it, but really it's a subset of artificial intelligence that applies learnings from the patterns that it, look, uh, that it identifies within data. It's trained on, uh, it's trained on a large amount of data. That it's, and it's not programmed, it's really, it's through understanding the data and deducing from the data. So it can really generate 
some unique content. But let's look at this a bit, coming back a bit to the streaming industry, yeah? So consumer behavior has significantly changed post the pandemic, yeah? With the AVOD markets and the SVOD markets really, really uh, growing faster. And uh, terrestrial TV reducing in relevance, but still holding, uh, holding, holding its ground. Two techniques, two technologies are really playing an important role now from generative AI and hyper-personalization. These two technologies together can really transform this industry. Yeah, generative AI can create audio, can create text, can create video content. And applying that with hyper-personalization where really you can change the experience based on specific information about user preferences, their behavior, or their demographic information. So these two technologies in tandem can really play an important role. Now, looking at this in the context of some, uh, re some real case examples, how, how many of you here have used chatbots? Yeah? Yeah, the chatbots. We all, we all have used chatbots. Now, traditional chatbots really operate on predefined rules and decisions. Yeah, they look for keywords and they apply rules. GPT-based bots or engines, they don't operate the same way. They really look at the context of what is being said, and through that, they are able to get to provide an outcome. Now, this is a really interesting example. We have been developing this engine uh, based on a large language model that is able, is going to be able to provide access to around 11,000 public services for the Scottish government. And that experience really can provide equitable access through multimodal techniques such as voice to be able to provide the services to the people when the people need them and for when they need them without actually being specific uh, to uh, a keyword that somebody is, is, is taking. So now we're taking this engine and really applying it into the media industry. But really understanding the and becoming more effective is also really key to remain competitive. Yeah? So if we consider techniques such as real time data extraction or automating, automating the tagging of, uh, uh, and transcription of content or tracking and identifying objects, people, locations, or scene change uh, recognition. All these techniques can really provide a transformative effect into the content production processes. And if you walk around here, you see some multiple examples of these being, uh, being proposed. So hyper-personalization has several applications, yeah? from harnessing that user data, being able to provide those personalized experiences, custom designs. It has the ability to really help engage and also open up monetization opportunities, especially through an e-commerce or a subscription uh, lens on top of it. So let's take a look at how this could look like. Imagine if you want to hear a podcast, yeah? But you don't have enough time to, to, to hear it. Or, like me, your mind wanders off thinking about something else, yeah? What if we can change that experience, yeah? Using textual analysis to provide summarization, using natural language processing to embed into the experience, using voice cloning to really replicate the voice on the fly of the podcast. That's what we did into this experience, which really 
uh, helped transform the way you would listen to a podcast. Yeah? So, auto tagging, voice cloning, auto transcription, auto translation are all technologies available out there. In, now, in the uh, animation that you're seeing, we've applied some of these technologies uh, in, in terms of looking at the using the auto tagging of content in association with a large language model and the semantic search to really change the way you could provide a, a personalized recommendation search experience, yeah? Now, this prototype has been developed by one engineer in one week. So that's the speed at which you can actually, using generative AI techniques, bring experiences to life and actually bring new experiences, immersive experiences to reality. So is generative AI well on the way of becoming better than what humans can create by hand? Well, earlier this year, there was an open letter published by a number of industry leaders that called for uh, the pausing of all training uh, sets more advanced than GPT-4, yeah? And, but what, what, what are the risks there? And I think, you know, Jeffrey Hinton, uh, who is one of the, uh, considered one of the godfathers of AI, yeah, he, he puts it this way, yeah? He says that something like a GPT-4 engine has around a trillion connections, can make around a trillion connections. And these engines that currently have a sort of common sense knowledge about everything, yeah? Now, they have a trillion connections. We have a hundred trillion connections. So, with much less connections, they can infer or get knowledge out of that in a much more efficient way. So should we all kind of run scared and go and hide on the table and wait for the sequel of Terminator Dark Fate? I don't think the answer is that. Yes, IP infringement, deep fakes, you know, privacy violations, these are all real risks. Generative AI, though, has a much bigger opportunity. And if it is part of a strategy, it can really help you transform and open up new opportunities, enhanced opportunities. So whereby the risks are real, we should keep, we should be aware and keep track and have a strategy towards approaching the risks that we know and keeping track of the upcoming risk. So, really understanding which experiences, which areas to investigate is really important. Because in this brief talk, we really went through a number of different examples, yeah? But there are, the, the, the possibilities are endless. So really understanding, you know, from production planning to script writing to AI-assisted content moderation, which area is going to provide the biggest opportunity. Now, we are an international innovation company. Yeah? We collaborate with some of the most ambitious businesses out there. We envision products and services of the future. So your strategic response is really key here, from setting up innovation sessions to taking some of those opportunity and proving those concepts is really, really important. And if you want, we at Intif are here to help you through that journey. So thank you uh, for indulging me and listening to me. Uh, we'll have some time for some questions. And yeah, that's me if you want to get in touch.